Okay, I'm back. Yeah, we've got everything all all symmetricalized here. So, in theory, the airplane should not pull to one side or the other anymore. So, that'll be good. I was also I had a small brainstorm here about naming conventions here. Let's let's do something here. Let's load this. See, right now my names for these things, I've got plane number 1, I've got plane number 2. And that's, you know, it's it is descriptive I suppose you could see it's kind of I tell you what no this this isn't um this isn't aviation enough this isn't aerospace enough we, we like our acronyms don't we um, yeah okay so I'm thinking that the first design would be the aerial transport dash one because it is the dash one it's the very first and it was an uh, it travels to the air and it transports three Kerbals, AT-1, until uh, as we got it into the air and we started flying it around, at that point this experimental vehicle became the controllable aerial transport, CAT-1. Uh, so yeah, that, that we demonstrated that it was stable, it was pilotable it, through the atmosphere, the CAT-1. Then we landed the thing and that is a controllable air, aerial and return transport, that's the CART. This is cart one. So yeah, cart one, we had some fun with that, played around with it. I think uh, whenever I started the Let's Play, uh, this was, uh, you had seen, uh, this was cart one at this time. That was what I should have called that plane. So what happened after that? Then we took the thing out of the atmosphere. We went extra atmospheric. So this became the X cart one. Some of you already see where I'm going with this, and if you see the reference already right now without having to look it up, then you're extra cool and you should pat yourself on the back or get a cookie or something. Okay, extra atmospheric controllable aerial return transport. Then what was the next step? The great success, the wonderful thing happened. We went, not only did we go into space, we went, did a complete orbit and returned, and thus was, thus we christened this plane. Oxcart 1 for orbital extra atmospheric controllable aerial, aerial return transport. Oxcart 1. Save that thing. Bam. So, what do we got here? Load plane 2. Gonna select this one. Plane 2, and you can just when I go change it, you can see it's a slightly shorter, stubbier design. Hmm. Okay. Plane 2 is definitely an aerial transport. Dash 2, let me see. And we have, whoops, hang on. It's actually a cart. Dash 2 is the cart. Save that. All right, cart 2. So what's the next step here? Now that we've tested the thing, it is controllable, it is landable. Um, I'm not going to try to take it into orbit just yet. What I'm going to do is, uh, well, let's, I do want to take it extra atmospheric and come back to landing. I want to test this. I'm thinking this SAS will make us much more controllable on re-entry. As entertaining as it is to be just right on the edge of death every single time uh, I re-enter, I, I don't want to do it every time. So here we go. Let's just put a solid rocket booster on there. Move the joystick over here. All right, we set to go. Get everything set up. Is my joystick here? Yeah. All right, let's launch this thing. Light this candle. Okay. Turn SAS on. Why am I even messing with the throttle? It's a solid rocket booster. There is no throttle. <laughs> I'm not aiming for any orbit. The only goal here is to get out of the atmosphere and come back. And, and I want to see a stable re-entry. That is the goal. Also, while, while I'm out of the atmosphere, I want to test these RCS thrusters just to see how those work. Okay, here we go. SAS is still holding us nice and steady. Going straight up. That <laughs> the booster should be tumbling down. It's going to crash. Just <laughs> my crash back on the launch pad real soon here. Right. 
11,000. We get up to when restriction here. When I get to 30,000 meters, I need to shut this engine down. Go, go, space plane. Let's go. This is why... Uh, you see what a good engine this is, how much thrust, how high I get, how fast. This is why I decided I was not going to use these for, for launch, for launching an actual rocket. 28, 29, 30, bam. How high will this take us? That will take us, Apoapsis, up here, 84,000. That's high enough. Yep, straight up. Hell of a ride. <laughs> Let's turn the RCS on. Actually, Let's see if I zoom in a little bit, you can see these things squirting. Yep. That works. Precision control on. If you look down the lower left, you know, the, the little icons for my, my three axis controls turn colors when they're blue. That means I got the precision control turned on. It means uh, it's not going to make. Uh, you have more delicate changes, very small changes in all three axes. Okay, so now if I've got my joystick set up correctly with these RCS, I should be able to. I can use them to thrust straight ahead. I can use them to thrust backwards. That's working correctly. Can we get some stability here? Can we stop rolling? Let's stop, 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 stop. We're still going up. We're not falling yet. Let's roll horizontal here. Hit that SAS. Good. Okay. Now I should also be able to... Yeah, I can thrust straight up with the RCS. That seems to work. I can thrust straight down. I can thrust to the left. I can thrust to the right. This all works correctly. I appear to have the everything mapped correctly. Now we're starting to come back down. Well, we went out to sea a little bit here, didn't we? Okay, turn RCS off for now. Let's try to regain some control here. Get that nose pointed in the direction of travel as I anticipate re-entry. Stop rolling. Stop rolling. Okay, over here. Wow, this thing is twitchy, twitchy, twitchy. Oops. Or maybe I'm just a really bad pilot. Okay, there. Nose is pointed in the direction of travel. Hit that SAS and that should lock it in place. Zoom out the camera a little bit. Let's roll wings level. Gently, gently, carefully. Well, that was maybe a bad idea. Wow. Wow, this thing is twitchy. Okay, let's turn the RCS on. Help me have some control here. Pilot-induced oscillation, that's what we call this. Come on. No, down. 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 Gentle, gentle. And hit the SAS. Let's put the camera into chase mode. Okay. Oops. Yeah, we're getting down and biting, just starting to bite in a little bit in the air. I turned the SAS off for one second and things started happening. Bad things. I want to roll wings level. Come on. That's all. Boom. There we go. Okay. I like this. I like this. This looks to me like it's working. If I turn RCS off, will it still work? Yes, it will. This is much, much better than previous efforts. Much better. I'm still going to wait and get down to below 5,000. We'll start trying to pull out of this. Coming up on 
5,000. Turn SAS off. Take back manual control. Ooh, twitchy, twitchy, twitchy. Careful, gentle, gentle. Gentle changes. This airplane does not like abrupt control movements at all. Everything's slow and smooth. Okay, that's control. Alright, let's see if we can come back to a good landing here, guys. Shut that down. Just spiral down. Alright, I'm happy with that. That was a controlled re-entry. It's still, it's, it's kind of challenging to get it lined up, uh, lined up with the, the right direction in time. It's, it's fun to fly. This, this ain't no, <laughs> this ain't no, you know, you know what one of the worst flight sims in the world is, is Microsoft Flight Sim, because it's, it's like somebody who read descriptions of what the various controls and air, airplanes do, and they made that, uh, it's, it's like the, the, the airplanes are on Valium, is you have nothing of the, the, uh, the dynamic changes that happen all the time when working with a rigid vehicle in a fluid medium. And what we've got here in this game, although you can't really call it any kind of a realistic, accurate flight sim, uh, I mean, that's not the goal, that's not what they're trying to make, even. It's nothing... I, I'm... I started saying that because I want to give Kerbal Space Program developers a compliment. This is nothing like Microsoft Flight Sim. This this airplane is twitchy. It's um, you have you have to pay real close attention to it. Not repeat earlier mistakes, landing too fast. Am I changing everything to make it symmetrical? That has worked out very nicely. Okay, take it down below 30. The airplane is no longer trying to pull to one side like it was earlier. Below 30, that's good. Can we get a landing, please? Damn it! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Let me see here. Um, what's our first thing in our RV-105 RCS thruster block collided with gear C? Structural failure linkage between. The thruster block collided with gear C. So this thing collided with a central gear that was... Okay, I need more landing practice. That's what I need. More landing practice. Because some weird twitchy stuff is happening here, guys. Let's see if I mean, it still is the same basic configuration as Oxcart One. Oh, now I can call it Xcart. This is Xcart Two. We went extra atmospheric. But it's been much more difficult to fly and much, much more difficult to land than Oxcart One. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Below 25. Ballooning along. Just can glide forever. 
below 22. Come on. Come on, baby. What the hell? As soon as that nose touches down, everything explodes. <laughs> 